When I get an idea, guys, I, I usually just jump right in. Hello, I'm Kristen, also known as Vine, here on my YouTube channel where I chat about what I'm making, what I'm knitting, what I'm sewing, or whatever, whatever crafty rabbit hole I happen to be diving down this week. And as always, I'm so happy that you're taking some time out of your day to chat about all those fun things with me. And I'm back. I'm back from a week off. Uh, I, had, I had a lot of work to catch up on last week, so unfortunately I did not have time to record. But I'm back this week with hopefully a fun episode to share with you guys. Uh, so gather around, grab a cup of something, and let's get into things. Uh, of course, we do have our history make-along, which is currently underway. That is our year-long make-along where we're all endeavoring to make something historically inspired prior to the 1950s. And that is coming to a close on March 1st, 2021. So if you are just joining me, welcome. Welcome to my channel. There's still time to join. Hop on over to the Wollenbein Ravelry group. Uh, where there is a respective thread for this make-along and all you have to do is partake in the chatter, share your projects, your whips, links to projects you're thinking about making, just general chatter and at the end or come March I will lock that thread and choose a winner for a giveaway prize. You can also participate in this make-along over on Instagram by using hashtag HistoryMAL. The same rules apply, share your makes, share what's inspiring you using that hashtag. And of course I follow it and I've just been so completely inspired. You guys blow me away. Whenever I check out that hashtag, it's just, ugh, yes. It speaks to my soul on so many levels. Um, so do check that out. And of course, I will link to where you can find all this stuff in the description box below, along with everything else that I chat about in this episode. Uh, and one more announcement. Of course, this episode is brought to you by Skillshare, which is an online learning community platform where you can learn pretty much anything. If you've been following me on Instagram, you might know that I've been toying around with my branding using different color schemes and color palettes. Uh, and I've been having so much fun learning about branding all on Skillshare. There are so many crash courses in how to brand your, your presence on social media, whether you have a YouTube channel, an Instagram feed, or a small business. I use Skillshare exactly for that. Yeah, it's it's a rabbit hole, so to speak, but you can also use it to learn new skills in sewing and knitting, uh, whatever your creative endeavors are, whatever you want to learn in the moment, I guarantee there's probably a Skillshare class for it. So if that sounds like something you're into and you haven't already, click on the link in the description box below and you can try Skillshare for a limited time on yours truly, absolutely free. And you're welcome, and thank you, Skillshare. All right, my friends, let's get into what I've been making. This episode is going to be kind of a hodgepodge of knitting and sewing. I know in the past I said I was trying out a new format where one week I would just talk about knitting and one week I would just talk about sewing. However, my sewing mojo has been kind of on the I don't know, I don't know how you want to call it, but it hasn't been as strong as lately, so I've just been, for the most part, knitting and crocheting. Um, However, this week I do have a, a, a bit of sewing to share with you, so I'm, I hope you guys are excited for that. Living in this project bag that I whipped up for myself, yet another uh, project bag. <laughs> if you're not familiar, I started uh, sewing project bags for my online shop at villainvineyarns.com, and this is kind of a, another prototype that I was playing around with because um, the drawstring project bags that I sew, uh, after I've you know cut out all my fabric, I'm left with these reasonably sized scraps, so to speak, uh, or rectangles. So I wanted to see what I could create using those. And while it's not enough to create another um, drawstring pouch, I figured I could just create a normal, basic, everyday zipper pouch. So this was a prototype. I'm not sure how I feel about it. I feel like it's a little too tall and a little too stout, but it does have a wide bottom. So I'm just hanging out with it, seeing how I like it. And so far, I kind of like it. I just kind of wish it had a handle. Why didn't I add a handle? I have no idea. I think I got lazy. But anyway, enough about the project bag. Let's talk about what's inside of it, shall we? Oh, but first, can we? Oh, yeah. I can't. Guys, witchy boots, witch hat, black hat, uh, crystal ball. Anyway, anyway. I digress. Let's see what's inside of it. So as you know, I've been knitting on this vintage pattern by Sirdar. It's a vintage ladies jumper. Uh, really, really interesting, fun construction. And I showed this off last week. I finished the body. Let me see. So here's what the body looks like. Uh, and 
it looks like a giant butterfly right now, but the way that this is gonna go is that this is gonna come down here, the sleeves are gonna be closed over here, so it's <laughs> so wonky. So if you can see, there's like a little triangle piece right here, and that's the part that I'm working on right now, and that is just knitting a plain rib on really tiny needles, and this is the front or the back, one of the pieces, both the front and the back um, of the insertions are gonna go right here. So that is gonna be grafted right up here, and it looks super tiny, but after I block it, it's gonna, it's gonna have a lot of stretch to it. And I'm not gonna lie, this took me quite a while, I think a week and a half to knit up, just between work and free time and knitting on super tiny needles. These were knit on US size ones, I think 1.25 millimeter needles. So yeah, really, really small, skinny needles, but yeah, it, it's got a nice stretch to it. So yeah, that is gonna be grafted in here. And then all I have to do is finish knitting the back, which I've been making significant progress on. So here's where I am on the second panel. Uh, and the yarn that I'm using, of course, is Vine Yarns, my hand dyed yarns in my Vine number nine colorway, which is a delightful moody mauve um, right up my alley. And I cannot wait to have this finished and off the needles because I do have a skirt that I'm excited to pair this with. Um, also, I'm not gonna talk about it now, but uh, once, once it's all said and done, I will take photos and you will see it in all its glory. Hopefully it will fit because <laughs> as I mentioned, I did not swatch, but I have a good feeling that this is going to fit me because um, as someone in the comments last, last episode wanted to know, you know, how do you know it's going to fit when you didn't swatch? And anyway, uh, this is another one of those cases where it's a do as I say, not as I do. And as I say, always swatch, always swatch. I like to live on the edge. I <laughs> take chances. I am, you know, I'm a very impatient person and I like to just dive right into things. But that's not to say that I didn't do my re research. Um, because I will say, uh, in the past when I've swatched, the swatch kind of lies, at least in my experience when I swatch. I can never be too sure if the swatch is actually telling me the truth. So the method to my madness is that I look at all of the previous projects that other people have knit and search through their notes. I don't consider myself necessarily a tight or loose knitter. I fall somewhere in between. So I, I like to think that I have an average knitting gauge, personal knitting gauge, if that makes any sense. Um, so again, what I did was I went on Ravelry and filtered through the projects that um, of people that knit the same project, the same sweater, using the same type of yarn ballpark, which is a uh, superwash fingering weight single ply and also people that have the same body type that I do, relatively same, uh, and who knit the same size. <laughs> and then I look at um, the needles that they chose for that project. And I went with the needle sizes that were most used. And a lot of people said that when they were knitting it, uh, that it looked really small, but it ended up fitting. And I, you know, I just went with that and I cast on and, Bob's your uncle. So here we are, uh, we shall see how this turns out, but I have a relatively good feeling but I have a relatively good feeling that this is going to work out fine because if you look, you know, just trying this on right here. So the neck is going to come up here. Uh, this is going to come down here. So it feels really comfortable around the neck area. There's little to none negative ease or positive ease. So it fits just right. Um, fingers crossed this will all pan out. And again, this is Superwash Merino yarn. So once it's blocked, it's going to, you know, stretch a little bit, because I know Superwash Merino has a tendency to stretch an inch or two after you block it um, vertically, not horizontally. So, uh, you know, some people did complain that it turned out too short for them. So I, I am confident that uh, once this is all said and done, this part right here is gonna stretch out a little bit. And of course it has a lot of give to it because it's it's ripping. So anyway, uh, long story short, that is where I am with my Sirdar Vintage Ladies Jumper. But as I mentioned last time, I am taking very detailed notes over on my Ravelry project page for this jumper. And in case you wanna knit one for yourself, it's all there. Um, but I did knit this piece a little bit longer than the pattern called for uh, because I have a relatively long torso. So I like to add a little bit of length to my sweaters if that makes any sense. So hopefully that'll work out uh, for the best. And uh, yes, yeah, so that is that is my ladies Sirdar vintage jumper. Uh, that's where I am this week with it. So yes, moving along. Actually, 
I think that is all the knitting content that I have to share with you, my friends. I have been working on my Battenberg Granny Square blanket. Uh, that's been getting a lot of love. Nothing to write home about. I've just been knitting a, or crocheting a plethora of Granny Squares to put into this blanket. I'll try and insert a some B-roll right here so you can see what it looks like, but it's just, grafting a, a plethora of squares together uh, while we watch, while Dennis and I watch TV at night uh, or we're in the car driving around. It's It's been getting a lot of love, but hopefully I'll be able to share that with you on, on the channel next time. So yes, that is that. Uh, now moving along to sewing. I, <laughs> as I mentioned last time, I have fallen down the rabbit hole of quilting. Um, again, my garment sewing has been kind of in the dumps lately. Uh, I don't know what happened. I'm just, all I really wanna do lately is sew straight lines, hence the project bag making. And uh, again, a, a lovely viewer suggested that if I enjoy sewing straight lines, why don't I try quilting? And again, yeah. Um, Excellent suggestion, wonderful suggestion, uh, because I've just, I've, I've fallen down deep. So anyway, the quilt pattern that I was planning to sew was only available through Craftsy, which has come back now. Like they went out of business and now they're back in business. However, the patterns that were available are not yet available yet, if that makes sense. Anyway, they're, they're, I'm, I'm sure they're just getting their ducks in a row before they re-released all the patterns that are in their database. So anyway, I tabled that project and took to Etsy and scrolled through and found, finally settled on a pattern that was available and picked my interest. So I settled on this other pattern called, Star all these patterns are called like Stargazer, Starburst. Uh, anyway, I think this is another Stargazer pattern and I'm completely blanking on the name. I'll pop it in the down bar below, but um, here is where I am with one square. How cool is this, you guys? I don't know why this is so satisfying, but um, this is only one square. So this is a little star square, and then we've got some big star squares right here. And you guys, this is so simple to whip up, so simple and so quick. The most time consuming part about this project or any quilting project is just cutting out all the squares. Um, and I'm using some pre-cuts uh, by Art Gallery in I'm blanking on the pattern collection, but I just purchased three fat quarter bundles and that was enough to whip up a queen size quilt. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm making, go big or go home, Kristen. I mean, I'm, I'm making a queen size quilt. Why I need a queen size quilt, we have a king size bed. I don't know, but here we are. I'm making a queen size quilt. So I think I have to make, I don't know, six of these and then six of these and then some other half star squares for the edges. Uh, but so far I have four big squares. And if you think this looks super complicated, it's really not. Um, these blocks, I guess you can call it a block, block square, it's a block um, that are comprised of two different, just two different um, quilted pieces together, if that makes any sense. So you see this rectangle right here? I had to make 32 of these uh, rectangles with these little, uh, triangles at the edge and then the other one on this one on the big star duh, 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 sorry this seems like really all over the place um, these other triangle this other rectangle right here with these two big triangles on the side so I have to make several of those and then the rest are just squares and you just piece them together to create a big star and a little star and then, you know, you create the blocks and then you stitch them all together and before you know it, you have a quilt. Um, so once I'm all done with the quilt top, I have to um, apply the batting and then the the uh, the back, the batting and the backing. And then I have to baste it with basting pins and then take it over to my machine and do the actual quilting. That is, that part worries me a little bit because uh, my machine is again, a Janome new home and it's meant for basic, you know, basic generic, garment sewing and given that this is going to be a queen size quilt, I'm not sure how that is going to fit under, the whole thing is gonna fit under my machine. So I am I might have to do a little trial and error with that. Um, if not, I might have to send it out to, I don't know, Missouri Star Quilt Company or, some, or someone with a bigger machine to quilt it. Um, we shall see. So yeah, a couple more finishing steps that have to take place after the quilt top is done. But for the most part, I feel like piecing the quilt together is probably the quickest and most 
simplest part of quilting that I can think of. So yeah, that that's where I am with, with quilting at the moment. Um, am I in love with the process? Mm, I'd have to get back to you on that because right now it's not like I wake up every morning and I think I want to quilt. No, that's that's not where I am with quilting at this point, um, but it is a really fun uh, project that I'm enjoying. It's definitely mixing up, mixing things up a little bit, which I like. Um, because I will say, you know, right now my, my garment sewing is in the dumps because it's not... So if I can articulate myself correctly, uh, I there's nothing like finishing a garment. I love I love garment sewing, the challenge of it, um, but it's it's not relaxing. Uh, it's It can be relaxing, but the garments or the patterns that I generally choose and gravitate towards for my personal style are generally very challenging because I am a glutton for punishment and I have an aesthetic that I just, I gravitate towards and they happen to be very complicated patterns, generally speaking. Um, and fit and um, sizing is still a thing that I'm trying to wrap my brain around and learn and get the knack of. Um, I will be totally honest, I, it's very hit or miss when I sew a garment and it fits just right. There's always that chance um, that it doesn't fit or it's loose in some area. And I have I still, you know, struggle with finding ways to fix that or alter garments. And it's just something that right now I don't have the time or energy to put into. I know if I was in the right mental space, so to speak, I would just put all my heart and time and effort into getting that down. However, right now, given everything that's going on with COVID and, you know, just life and there's a, there's a lot going on. And right now I just, I need quick, simple, relaxing, gratifying projects. So I hope that makes sense. I still love garment sewing. I'm just not feeling it right now. So quilting is where it's at right now. Project bag making um, and a knitting, knitting, has definitely made a comeback. I want to knit all the things, maybe because autumn's here. I'm super excited about that. So yay, knitting mojo up, <sighs> sewing mojo, not so much, but you know, I'm just riding it. I'm going with it. I'm not, I'm not questioning it. I'm just making what I want to make when I want to make it. And there you go. I'm not sorry. All that to say that there has, there has been a little garment sewing because I got it when I get an idea, guys, I, I usually just jump right in because while I haven't been sewing personal garments, um, it is it is October, Halloween is coming, and <laughs> if you are not familiar, Halloween is my my season. This is this is Kristen's month. Halloween, October, I am I am here for it. I really want a Halloween costume. I know that Halloween is probably canceled this year, but what's why why should that stop me from making my own halloween costume i'm not going to make any promises that this is actually going to come to fruition or that i'm going to complete this project but i like the idea of you know i got started i started it so we'll see we'll see where it goes but um if you follow my instagram stories you might have caught wind that i i cast a little something on and 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 yeah yeah if you're wondering what this is, uh, this is a pair of Regency stays. And if you're not familiar with what the Regency era is, think Jane Austen, Pride and Prejudice, Emma, you know, the, the style of dress where uh, you had the umpire waist, uh, the waist came up to here and it was just a long skirt at the bottom, you know, kind of baby doll style, if that makes any sense. And, you know, the, the their stays, um, for the most part, were kind of like a cropped corset. and. That is what this is. So yeah, I woke up one day and decided I'm gonna make a pair of Regency stays. I just I, I just wanted to. So this surprisingly came together very, very quickly. I whipped this up in one day. They're not, these are, I would almost say that this is a toile or a muslin because there's some stuff that I would do differently if I were to make this again. Uh, but th this is completely fully boned. It has uh, some gores in it, which I have a funny feeling because again, I don't make muslins, but this will probably count as a muslin. Um, I might have to take these in a little bit because again, itty bitty titty committee over here. Um, I don't have the wherewithal to fill these babies, these cups up. But yeah, it's, it's fully boned uh, in the front. I'll show you on the back. Yeah. Um, and I did use Cotille, which is uh, 
which is a type of fabric that were, was used to line, uh, or the main fabric of a, of a corset. It has like a little structure. It has a, a very similar to canvas. You can also use canvas. Uh, it just, it's a very stiff uh, structured fabric, if that makes any sense. Um, so this is completely lined in cotille and then flat lined with white linen over here. And then I used faux uh, whalebone or faux baleen, which uh, during that time period, a lot of the bones, a lot of the boning that they used in corsets were lightweight baleen. However, you know, it's illegal to kill whales <laughs> these days. So um, we have synthetic bale whale bone um, and that's what this is lined with. So basically it's just flexible plastic and it's really lightweight. And then it has straps on the back. Um, so once I wear this, I just have to insert the grommets and the, the laces and Bob's your uncle. But again, I think I'm just going to make another version. I just went stash diving and pulled out this uh, natural colored um, pre-made bias tape binding, which I regret dearly because it, store-bought bias binding has this, I think it's like a polyester cotton blend and it's very stiff and it just, oh, I don't know. I'm just not a fan. Um, but yeah, the straps and yeah, so anyway. Um, what else did I wanna say about this? The pattern, the pattern is by Red Threaded, uh, which she, you can buy custom corsets. She also offers corset patterns that you can purchase, download and make yourself. Um, I think, yeah, she has PDF versions and then one physical copies that you can order through the mail. So um, I will link to her Etsy shop if you are interested in checking out her stuff because she has a whole bunch of um, corset patterns that run the full gamut of history. So um, through Regency all the way through the Edwardian era, I believe. So there's that. And I, the instructions were really easy to follow. Um, and again, this came together, I want to say in about four hours, at, at least to this point. So, um, all I have left to do now, um, you can see that it's not entire, it's, I'm not going for historical accuracy here, guys. Uh, you can see that I did serge all the edges on the inside with my serger, which obviously was not historically accurate. I did whip stitch the bottom of the bias tape just because I felt like doing a little hand stitching. Um, I have yet to um, whip stitch the, the top portion of the bias tape in place. Uh, but yeah, that might be machine worthy. So anyway, we'll see. Um, but the whole reason why I decided to make this is because for my Halloween costume, I don't even, I don't even know if I should talk about it. I kind of want it to be a surprise. I want it to be a surprise, but Regency era is the hint. So anyway, if you want to take a guess of what it's going to be, feel free to leave it in the comments below. I'm not going to tell you because I'm not sure. Number one, if this is, I'm actually going to finish it. Number two. Yeah, I, I do it. I'm, We'll see if it gets done. We'll see if it gets done. No promises, but um, anyway. <laughs> and that, my friends, is all the creative content that I have to share with you this week. So I am gonna move along to the blather segment, a segment where I chat about what's been going on in my life, should you care to stick around, and something that I want to talk about uh, that I'm pretty stinking excited about. Um, if you are not familiar with uh, Tommy of the Squirrel Pie Productions podcast, hi Tommy, she's also Dynamite Trujillo on Instagram and Ravelry. Anyway, check out her, her podcast, her YouTube channel. Anyway, she recently got into roller skating. I think about a couple months ago, she posted her first roller skating vlog. And at first I didn't really think too much about it. I was just like, oh, that's cool, awesome, you know? And then uh, she started posting more vlogs about it. And then I saw some segments on the news where they're talking about how roller skating's making a comeback and everyone's getting into it because of COVID-19, which by the way, I don't believe that just like knitting, you know, when you tell somebody that you knit, someone always says, oh, it's making a comeback. It never went away. People have always been knitting. I don't know why people think like these things have, are making a comeback. They're, they've always been there. And what I've been reading up and learning about roller skating, roller skating has always been there. It's, it never went away. People have been doing it. Anyway, off my soapbox, I digress. Um, I all that to say that I've just been so inspired by Tommy, like just watching her vlogs and then, um, you know, seeing other people do it, like be it on the news or, you know, on YouTube. And it looks, it looks like so much fun. And like I need another rabbit hole to fall down. I mean, I, 
Hi, I'm Kristen and I bought myself a pair of roller skates. They're not here yet. I've been stalking tracking like nobody's business. I took to the internet, did my research, looked up um, some YouTube channels for beginner uh, roller skate recommendations and believe it or not, because the roller skating has become very popular during these COVID-19 times, Corona times, um, there is a shortage of roller skates, my friends. Yeah, they're sold out everywhere. I could not find a decent pair to purchase. I actually had to purchase a pair. The, the pair that I wanted, the Moxie Lollies, I had to pre-order. So <laughs> those may not become available until spring of 2021, along with a whole bunch of other brands. Anyway, so I pre-ordered those. And in the meantime, I was able to purchase an inexpensive pair of True Grip Malibu skates from Amazon. So those should be here this Friday. Um, and I am very, 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 very excited about those guys. Anyway, I've just been having so much fun watching YouTube videos and reading articles about the history of roller skating and, you know, its roots and yeah, it's, it's deep guys. So if you know me, I love, I love deep diving into the history of things. So roller skating is definitely a fascinating one if you want to check it out. Um, and I did watch um, the documentary that Tommy recommended, uh, Roller Dreams, which completely fascinating behind, you know, the roller skating culture out in California, Venice Beach, if you are interested. I, again, I will link it down to it below. And while I don't have the roller skates with me right now, I've just been binging all of the YouTube videos, learning the basics, how to, you know, skate forward, skate backward, stop, which I'm sure will come in handy many, many a time. So hopefully by the time my skates get here, I will have had a good foundation of uh, learning under my belt. So, you know, once I do get the skates on, I don't immediately fall on my butt and hurt myself. So yeah. Oh, and I did get protection. I have my bicycle helmet. I bought wrist pads, knee pads, elbow pads. I'm all set on that front. Yeah. So I don't know, something different, uh, something fun, hopefully. And I, you know, I just, I really just need to get out more. I need an excuse to get outside and get some exercise because I hate exercising. I have a treadmill. I've gone through phases of running on the treadmill and I, I'm, I will be totally honest. I am not a runner. I have a bicycle, but getting my bike off the rack and onto the street. It's such a production. I love the idea of just popping on some skates, heading out the door and, you know, having fun, learning tricks, dancing. And I love, I love the dancing aspect of it. I think I'm going to have a lot of fun with this guys. So anyway, tell me if you're watching, thank you. <laughs> um, anyway, I'm going to end things there. Thank you so much guys for hanging out with me this week. If you are new here, welcome. If you enjoyed, please feel free to like, and subscribe down below. I put out a video for your viewing pleasure every week and until the next one, happy knitting, happy sewing, happy making, happy skating, <laughs> and I'll see you next time. Bye.